Recalling the life of Helen Campbell is easy to do, given the impact she could make on a person in short order. To say she was a woman of impeccable character, great humor, and limitless heart, barely scratch at the surface. To point out that she was a devoted and loving wife states the obvious. Perhaps the best place to start is with her charitable work. There is no way Helen's loss can be lessened for William, but he can take comfort in the fact that many of the most vulnerable people across this city mourn her passing as well. The thousands of hours she gave to helping others less fortunate and the gratitude of the countless people whose lives she personally touched stand as a living monument to her generosity of spirit and sense of community. When she could have merely given generously to the charities to which she devoted her tireless efforts. For all of this, the most that can be said is, you will be missed. I miss my sister. You can be all right, William. Would you like your dinner now, Mr. Campbell? No, thank you, Nelda. I'll get it myself later. You can go home now. Thank you.
Hello. <laughs> Brings back memories. You grew up in the neighborhood? Stewart Street. I came over to tell you that I opened a reading room over on Franklin Boulevard. I just want you to think of it as a resource, a place where kids can have access to books, study, support groups, whatever it is that kids do these days. Do you have a background in education, Mr. Campbell? I wanted to be a teacher once. No, I'm a retired businessman. And what gave you the idea to open a reading room? My wife. Well, I think that's a wonderful gesture. May I make a suggestion? Go ahead. Well, perhaps you'd like to make a donation to the school. Uh, we're refurbishing the library and, you know, with the budget tightening the way it is. Well, I'll give that some thought. Primarily wanted to let you know about the place. Frankly, I've been there since the first of the week and not one person's come in. It's getting kind of lonely. I appreciate everything you're doing. Uh, maybe you can leave your address with uh, Mrs. Carver on your way out and uh, we'll, we'll put something in the school newspaper. <laughs> Thank you for stopping by.
You got free sodas? Yes. Come on in. What do I have to do for him? Nothing. That's what free means. Selling books? No, I'm not selling them. Uh, this is a reading room. Oh, uh, so it's like a library. No, uh, it's, it's, it's sort of like a library, yeah. You know we have a library down on Maple Street? That library's been closed for almost a year. Do you have any magazines? No. Oh, well, you can learn a lot from magazines. You ought to get some. Well, you know you can get some across the street at the drugstore, right? Was I talking to you, Nick? You can get sodas over there, too, but they ain't free. I'll get some magazines. OK, get Ebony and Jet, Essence, People, So Proper Weekly, and Pride. Everybody's got to come in and get their own. You best just let him do what he wants. I think you're all set here. Yeah. Got a bag of tokens and I got a receipt for you. Looking to put some bars on the winners. We can do that too now. I took them off. Good luck. Reese to the sodas. Okay. Okay. Let's go. What happened? No more for sodas? It's still free, but you need a token. Oh, um, okay. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks, mister. Don't you want to play the computer? Computer doesn't have any games. Yeah. Bye. This is Officer Keeley. I'm here in front of uh, your establishment on Franklin Boulevard. Your front window got smashed. I'll be right down. Uh, I think it'll uh, be all right for the night. It's only a bunch of books. We'll keep an eye on it. They may have made off with your computer. We saw some cables in there. Well, thank you, officer. 
I will take care of it tomorrow. Fine. Thank you. Good night. medicine because she couldn't read the bottle right. He had to go to the hospital. If I could read better, I could help. Don't they teach you at school? They're teaching, but it's hard for me. Hmm. Do you know your alphabet? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Come sit out here and write your name for me. Majuli. Majuli. Oh, that's your name. Majuli. I'm William. Hi. Oh, what's that letter? M. Huh? And how do you say it? M. And what's that letter? M. Uh -huh. And what's that word? Most. That's close. It's moose. Moose. I have trouble with the vowels. Yeah, you know, those vowels are tricky sometimes. I could have wrote my name neater, but this chair is too big for me. Yeah, you know, you're right. You'll have to get you a chair of your own. So you'll teach me? Uh, I'll try. So, does it have a lot of good games? Yeah, I've installed some of the more popular and educational games. And now that you got this cable modem, you could download others from the internet. Let you do it. Take care. <laughs> you got those magazines! Sorry about your window. What'd they steal? The computer. Here it is. This is how I'm gonna fix my hair. Who's that? Beyonce? Mm-hmm. See? This style, this is what they call ethereal FOS. Girl, you ain't got hair like that. What you need to do is set your hair in some straws. Leisha. <laughs> what? You don't mind. Come on. Turn around. Keys, give me the keys. Up by the wall. Move by the wall. Okay, William, you've given it a good faith effort. I don't think my sister intended for you to get killed. Douglas, I'm not gonna get killed. Where's your car? Over here. Do you realize you've just been robbed at gunpoint? I don't think he really had a gun. Oh, that's wonderful. After you get shot, what are you gonna say? I don't think he really had a bullet? She wanted me to do this. She had a reason. Sure, she probably thought it was therapeutic, not mope around forever. But there are other alternatives. Take up golf, do a fundraiser. Those are activities where they don't steal your car. It's only a couple more months. My advice? You want to make a contribution? Contribute money. It's more direct. I'll survive. No, no. No, no, no. This one here. Hey, I am Mr. Campbell, come quick.
can't keep anything nice around here. Have you find something? Uh, do you have any of those books for the SAT? Uh, the test you take to get into college? The scholastic aptitude test? Well, yes, I know what you're talking about. No, uh, you mean like a prep book? Yes. No, we don't have any of those. But I'll get you one. You know, you can take a practice SAT. I already did. How'd you do? Come back tomorrow. OK. Are you going to buy him that book? You can't let a book stand between him and college. Nonsense. What stands between him and college is people's lack of care and lack of encouragement. I'm William Campbell. Diana Weston. May I borrow this book? By all means. What's the idea behind this place? I'm learning as I go along. They ain't gonna make you no deal, uh, nice meeting you, Diana. Alicia, you're just the person I want to talk to. I was wondering if you'd like to work here in the afternoons, watching the younger kids. Uh, I'll pay you $10 an hour. We can firm things up later. And the vowel sounds exactly like you say it. A, E, I, O, U. Oh, yeah. The B. Right. Ka, ka, ka. Hello. Mr. Campbell, Officer Keeley here. You arrested the man that robbed you. You found my car? No, the computer. I see. We'd like for you to come down and identify the item. Sorry, right this way, sir. Yeah, I'm moving, huh? Yeah, it looks like the same one. We'll have to keep it as evidence. It'll be returned to you after the trial. Thank you. What's his name? Javier Ramirez. Does he do this a lot? Been picked up before. Petty stuff, but he could be moving up. Can I talk to him? Sit down. How much did you get for the computer? 50 bucks. Doesn't seem worth it, does it? Man, what is this about? You can go back to your cell anytime you want, Javier. That's all you had, so that's what I took. Is that how you get your money? Robbing people? No. That's a hobby. Actually, I'm a dentist. Did you ever consider getting a job? There are no decent jobs to get in my neighborhood. I'll give you a job. Don't mess with me, man. Not messing with you. Security guard, the reading room, 400 a week. What? You want me to be your pet gorilla? Best offer I have. If it's beneath your dignity, somehow compromises your values, stay here. What about the charges? As long as you're working, I'll drop the charges. Young man. 
we have a deal. Javier. Do you know Mr. William? I'm working for him. He's teaching me to read. I know all the vowel sounds. I was never very good in school. Maybe Mr. William can help you. Yeah, maybe. Hi, Mr. William. Is that all you ever do? Is read? I guess I do read quite a bit. Don't you ever get tired of that? Don't you ever want to go play? Reading is like play to me. Reading isn't like playing. One day, I'll take you to the park, and I'll teach you something. <laughs> One day. Right now, let's work on these balls. May I get a soda first? Is your first today? Yes. OK. What up, cousin? What's up, man? It's good, man. You know, just doing this thing. Well, come on, compadre, let's roll. I feel like I should hang around here a couple more days. Why? It's over, man. He dropped the charges. I know. But I feel like we have uh, an agreement. Hey, don't be a chump, cuz. What, you gonna hang around for this old man like this pit bull? Come on, let's party. What's up, Reverend? What are you gentlemen up to? Nothing. Just chilling. I've got a wonderful idea. Seeing that you've got so much time to chill, why don't you volunteer down at the church? We can always use some help. Yeah. Yeah, we'll think about that, Reverend. Later, compadre. I do watch. Let's roll, man. I'm working. Dog. Very good. May I help you? I'm Reverend Rashid Rahim from the First Faith Congregation. William Campbell. What are you doing here, sweetheart? Mr. William is teaching me to read better. That's a good thing. You go home now, okay? Okay. I'll be back tomorrow, Mr. William. Sweet little girl. Yes, she is. And you're teaching her to read better? Yes. Tell me, by teaching a couple of poor kids to read, you think that makes a difference in the big social order? Actually, I don't have a master plan. Then why are you here, my brother? Tell me, uh... Is this reading room a problem for you, Reverend? So far, you're down here playing Santa Claus, giving out free sodas, but maybe in a while you get bored. Go back to the lakefront or wherever with your soul cleansed. Actually, I was raised in this neighborhood. Well, that was quite a while ago, wasn't it? And it ain't the same anymore, is it? So, Reverend, what's your interest? Why did you come here? Oh, we serve as advocates for this neighborhood, Mr. Campbell. We embrace our cultural identities and encourage self-sufficiency and local ownership of businesses. You think I came here to exploit this neighborhood? My concern is that you come into our community, form attachments like with that little girl, give hope. Then you decide it's not what you thought it would be and you leave. Question. What harm would reading these books do? Mark Twain, Melville, the classics. <laughs> the classics. 
40% of the people down here are Hispanic, 20% Asian. Tell me, do you have any Paz, any Marquez, any Lao Tzu? Because those are classics to them. Point well taken. Have a good day, Mr. Campbell. Does that mean I have your approval? Do you need my approval? I'm getting that impression. You brush up on your ethnic studies. My brother. I've been expecting you for a week. I have midterms. You can take it home if you like. I'll look at it here. It's too hot for me. Damn, we're out of orange. They tried to make me read this once in high school. That movie was on the other night. That's some slow stuff. Denzel, damn. He makes like 20 million a year. I should be an actor. Nothing to that. Maybe you should take acting lessons. You think you should take lessons for everything? Three big So that's what pictures help you? Going out. <laughs> Excellent. Mr. Campbell? Edgar, this is Mr. Campbell. Edgar, pleased to meet you. You sit down here and look at the books while I talk with Mr. Campbell. That, uh, that boy is the brightest kid in his class. His math ability is off the charts, but he has a reading disorder, and I want you to help him. You're his mother? I'm his teacher. Oh, so the other day when you were down here, what was that? Undercover work? Yes. Well, what can I do for Edgar? I don't know anything about reading disorders. Aren't the public schools obligated to offer special courses for this sort of thing? Yes, well, what the public schools are obligated to do and what they actually do are two very different things. Well, I'm not equipped. Well, then get equipped. That's what you came down here to do. Do it. Are you Marjorie's teacher as well? Yes. And I see the progress you've made with her. Then we'll see you here tomorrow. Come on, Edgar. Give me a few days. child with a learning disability. Not my child. I opened a reading room over on Franklin and his teacher brought him in. But how old is he? Oh, he's eight, I guess, or nine. Has he been tested? I was hoping to leave that all up to you. <laughs> okay. Um, so what would the schedule be like? Any weekday afternoon. School's over at three. Do you know how Franklin is in the Oakdale district? I wouldn't be interested in going down there. We have security. It's not that bad. Sorry, I'm not interested. Well, it seems to me that given who you are, you would be interested in something like this. And just who am I? You're an educator. The timing's just not good for me right now. Right now, the timing is crucial for him. Look, I know Oakdale. I grew up in Oakdale. And I've worked real hard so that hopefully I won't ever have to go back there again if I don't want to. 
I need to make something of myself. I don't know if you can understand that or if it makes any sense, but I'm sorry. What makes sense is Edgar needs help reading and you want to be a teacher. I'm sorry. He's in the Oakdale district. It's not that bad. I've been down there almost a month already. But if you're worried about security, no, no. This child doesn't have transportation. Oh, uh, okay. Yes, I understand. Goodbye. Hello? I read your ad on the college bulletin board. Would you be willing to do some tutoring down in the Oakdale area? Yes, that Oakdale. OK, thank you. Bye. There's a boy in Oakdale named Edgar who needs your help. If you can help, please call me. You'll be changing a life, and you'll be fulfilling the purpose of yours. I'm finished. Excellent. And I'm with the pressing home. What you need is a flat iron and you should go next to the writer so she can do something about it. Go ahead, Leecher. Take whatever magazine you want. Have you seen Javier? No. Nope. Hi, Daryl. What up, Daryl? Huh? What's wrong, Daryl? You too good to talk to me? You know your brainy math classes? You know you ain't nothing but a wimp. Come on, David. Very bad hair day. Go, 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 go. Come on, let's go to the park to play basketball. Yeah, let's go shoot some hoops. Yeah, yeah. Now, Edgar. What's that letter? E. Now, say that word. E. Uh, I don't know. Just tell me. G. It doesn't help for you to give him the answer. I'm stupid at reading, that's all. Oh, no, you're not stupid. Miss Weston told me. You're very smart. Then how come I can't read? Edgar, this is Jillian. Hi, Edgar. Hi. I've got some really fun games I'd like to play with you. I bet you have a great memory. I do my math minute faster than anyone in my class. Well, then this will be easy for you. And your name is? Majali. Majali, pleased to meet you. Why don't you take William over to the other table and read some stories while Edgar and I play for a little while? Okay. Okay. I have some letter blocks here that will hopefully help us learn how to read. He's going to need two sessions a week. Uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays would fit in with my class schedule. Oh, uh, would you like me to pay for today? Mm, we can take care of it monthly. Also, I'd like to set up a little area on the corner, a rug, some pillows for the kids to sit on, you know, so it doesn't feel so much like work and school for them. Whatever you want. OK, thanks. Oh, correct step one. Let's go into some math. Hey, Bill. What's cracking? Put, put my coat in the chair there, please. Where have you been for these last two days, Javier? Had some business to take care of. Well, this is your business. You have a job here. I know that. Then why didn't you show up for work? I told you I was busy. Well, be busy on your own time. What am I? Like your slave? No. You're like my employee. You draw a paycheck. Yo, man, I don't take crap from no one. Oh, no, Javier, this is not crap. This is life. 
This is plain old ordinary everyday life. And it goes on in every neighborhood in this city. I'm getting preached by the big rich man. I tell you what, you take the day off. You think about it, you do your business, whatever. And if you still want a job, show up on Monday. The sun is up. Now is the time. Long eye. Time for all dogs to get up. Perfect. Girl, you better get your little butt home this instant. I will. And I better not catch you spending time down here again. Yes, Mama. Now take your little brother home. Yes, Mama. This is Hawkins. I'm not Hawkins. She's got our daddy's name. Well, ma'am. Marjorie needs extra help with her reading. She needs to be watching her little brother. She got school to teach her reading. She'll learn soon enough. Maybe not soon enough for Lamont. I need Marjorie at home because I've got a job interview. How's it gonna look if I bring a five-year-old to the supermarket for an interview? They're gonna see already I got babysitting problems. In our house, we got to eat before we read. You can't leave him with Marjorie. She's only eight years old. And I can't leave him alone. You can leave him here. I pay Alicia to watch the little kids. And who's going to pay after they chase you up out of here? I'm not getting chased out of here. Yes, you are. Your kind always is. You sure you're doing that right, William? Do you want to do it, Douglas? No, thanks. Uh, Helen taught me all about it. I was thinking about the headstone, what to engrave on it. Oh, there's plenty of time for that. I never knew what she would have wanted. I never let her talk about it. But she did say that she wanted to be buried where your folks are. How are the kids? Good. Keith deciding which law school to go to. Ah. You'll have a junior partner in two years, huh? <laughs> I don't think so. He wants to go into labor law. Too much of that Bradshaw idealism in it. <laughs> Melissa? She loves design school, wants to become a commercial artist, open up her own business. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So how's that place of yours in Oakdale going? It's going good. I'm teaching this little girl how to read better, and this high school boy is studying for his SAT, and he will go to college. And, uh, other kids come in, it's really gratifying. Your term is up soon, no? Sounds like you've done some good work. Why don't you turn it over to someone else? Oh, I might do that. Daryl. Take your book home with you. I'm afraid I'll lose it. Lose it? You treat this book like it's the most important thing in your life. You're more likely to lose your arm. Uh, you know, maybe somebody's stealing. I can't give away books down here. Nobody's gonna steal it. I don't want to take it home, okay? My father doesn't have the money to send me to college. So why would I tell him I'm taking a college entrance exam? Or just tell me I'm wasting my time? Why didn't you tell me? What would it change? I need a high score on the SAT to get a scholarship, or else I'm gonna end up selling tires like him, talking about how unfair the world is and how I should be boss because he ain't nothing but a fool with a piece of paper from college. I still wish I'd known, Daryl. I used the reading room address for them to mail me my scores. Oh, that's fine. You're gonna do great on that test, okay? Yeah. I'll see you next week. Hey, old man. Run in and get me a soda. You're welcome to come in and get one for yourself. I'm too uneducated to do it myself. I want you to do it for me. You know, you gentlemen have something I don't have. Time to waste. E. 
That doesn't mean anything. Yes, it does. It means you got it right. Okay, let's try some new sounds. K. It's just sounds. Not together. K. Kid. Pet. V. Right. K. You must be Lamont. You got soda? Mm, how about a glass of lemonade? I want soda popper. I'll tell Mama. Oh, okay, okay. You got it. Be to yourself for a while, Marjorie. Stefan, have you seen Javier? I saw him yesterday down by the overpass. What goes on down there? I don't know. The guys just hang? Hang, huh? Who's that tall man that's been coming to the park lately, the one with the tattoos? I don't know. He doesn't bother anybody. Can I get some sodas for Eric and Anthony? I'm playing hide and seek, and that's the only way I can get them to come out. <laughs> well, I will make an exception in your case. You were my first customer. Mr. Campbell. Hello, Reverend. I see your trees are doing well. Yeah. I was afraid for a while there that, uh, wouldn't even take root. <laughs> nice selection. I'm glad you approve. The congregation continues to have discussions regarding your presence in the neighborhood, Mr. Campbell. I thought that was settled. We have learned that a number of buildings in the area are owned by WHC Ventures, of which you are president and sole shareholder. That is correct. How many other properties in the area do you own, Mr. Campbell? I'm told that the congregation owns several properties in the area. What is the difference? The difference is we live here. I do not own any other properties in the area. Stop hassling, Mr. Campbell. Can't you see the work he's doing here? Sister. One man's good intentions do not change my world. But this is his world, Reverend. Well, that's very heartfelt. But the issue is larger than that, isn't it? We do not want to set a precedent that would open the door to others who might want to exploit our community, do we? I see your legion of supporters is growing. That's a good sign. Why can't you make an exception in my case? You can see what my intentions are. I am puzzled by your determination. And I am puzzled by your resistance. The result of many disappointments. Hey, boss. You don't have a job here anymore, Javier. I know I messed up, but I got my reasons. I don't care about the reasons. You're fired. 
How come you're so nice to everybody else and so hard on me? Because you're the only one scamming me. You act like you gave me the most glamorous damn job in the whole world. It was a job. It paid a good wage. Now, I'm gonna hire somebody else. Yeah, somebody else to sit out front and be your pit bull. Oh, that's how you see the job. That's not how I see it, man. That's how it is. No. It was an opportunity. Opportunity? For what? Huh? To be a future bank guard? What's good enough for you, Javier? Is somebody gonna make you a, a, a movie star or a rap singer? Sure as hell nobody's gonna make me their punk. Nobody's gonna make you anything at this rate. Let's face it, Javier. You want the money, you don't wanna do the work. I'm sure that you've had an unfortunate background no matter how disadvantaged you've been. Just stop blaming the world for everything. You make your choices. Here's the money. Grab a book, Marjorie. We'll start in a minute. No reading today, Mr. William. Hmm. Javier. Hey, he's got new computers in that place now, doesn't he? Leave it alone, man. Hey, what do you mean? You got a key, right? I mean, you've been opening up that place for him. Just let it go, cuz. What is with you, man? You don't know that sucker nothing. It's not worth it. Just leave it alone. Oh, man. Tripping. Lost it, man. Hey. I'm the one around here who says what's worth it. Not for me. Okay, primo. You don't want to do it? Just give us the key. Hey, man. Now we're blood. Why are you siding with this guy? He doesn't care about you. Give me the key, and you don't have to have nothing to do with it. No! Man, I can't believe you're doing this, man. Ever since you were a kid, I took care of you. Let you hang around me. You took care of me, huh? You just wanted me to hang around to make you feel like a big man. Hey! Where you going? What? Now you got this job and you think you're better than me? You ain't going back there. I promise you that, Yuka. Hello?
Where are you going, Brother Campbell? Don't you see there's work to be done here? This is our community! This is our neighborhood! This is our house! We must not let them do this to our house! Who's gonna join us? Are you gonna join us? Are you gonna join us? Are you gonna join us, Brother Campbell? All right, pile all the trash in the center here. Try and salvage as many books as possible, put them on the shelves. All right, good friends. Good work, good work. Now, it's time to take the trash out. Need some more help? Always. So, do you know who did this? I've got some idea. Got any proof? Not really. That wasn't you who broke into this place and took the computer, was it? No. What'd you cover for him? He's already gone to jail. He'd do hard time. That's what you do for family. At least that's what I used to think. How'd you know? Just a hunch. I've gotten acquainted with you a little. Okay, what's A's best friend? I. Sound it out. Wait. W A I T. Must have that like a fool. Picked up some more magazines. Oh, great. I'm burnt out. You'll do great tomorrow. Cool. Well, you'll be fine. What's that supposed to be? It's a collage, fool. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> Can I walk you to your car? You know, you should stay away from him. The man's got no respect for women. <laughs> um, yeah, you can walk me out. Bye, Jillian. See you next week, kiddo. You know, I would hate her if she wasn't so nice. I hate her anyway. Girl, you just spiteful. Annoying. Look who's talking. Daryl. Come here. You gotta pass that test tomorrow. I've seen how hard you work, and I know how smart you are. I like your hair. They're extensions. You look nice. Thank you. You know, the world doesn't have to know that they're extensions. If the whole world knows that your texture didn't change overnight, Misha. You sure did get things up and running again quickly. How do you like the new look? I think it's wonderful. Miss Weston, look, I'm reading a book about snakes. That's wonderful, Edgar. Don't you have to go home soon? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Do you like lasagna? Do you live in the south side? Yes. 
Whereabouts? Crescent Hills. You must have had a very good job before you opened up the reading room. I owned a factory. Fanfare picture frames. It was my family's business. I was raised right over here on Stewart Street. So you sold that business? Yeah, to a group of investors. And then Helen and I were going to do some traveling. You know, this was very good. You're really good with kids, you know. I wanted to be a teacher once. Why didn't you? Um, I left graduate school to take over the family business and never went back. You never had kids of your own? No, we couldn't. You know, back in the day when we were married, we didn't have all that technology. You know, <clears throat> when a woman was told that she couldn't have babies, she just resigned herself to the fact. And what about adoption? We talked about it. I was stubborn. I wanted my own. It was a big mistake. When I look around, I see these young people like Jillian. I say to myself, she could have been my daughter. We could have had a family. How long have you been a teacher? 25 years. Must be very gratifying. It's actually gut-wrenching. <laughs> Think about it. A class of eight-year-olds with every problem in the book. Half of them won't even graduate high school, and a very small fraction of them will even think about going on to college. Last week, this, uh, this young man came into my class and gave me a big hug. And it turns out he was one of my first students and now is a third-year resident. That counts for something. It counts for everything. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish by Dr. Seuss. I'll read the words and you point to the pictures, okay? Okay. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. Black fish, blue fish, old fish, new fish. This one has a little stock. This one has a little car. Say what a lot of fish there are. Majoli. Mama! Marjolee's teaching me to read. That's good, baby. You both be home by five, you hear? We will, Mama. Yes, some are red and some are blue. Some are old and some are new. Some are sad and some are glad. Some are very, very bad. How you doing? Oh, hi, Mrs. Wing. Oh, hey. Nice you need a haircut. <laughs> Alicia, what's wrong? My stepdad beat me up. What? He's drunk. He said I burnt his dinner, but he doesn't need an excuse. You better call the police. No. No. If you put him in jail, my mom's going to blame me. He'll be fine tomorrow. What's wrong? My son. It really hurts. You better get it to the emergency room. How is your doctor? She has a fractured rib that's pushing on her lung. I bandaged up her ribs, but she's still in a bit of pain. I'd like to keep her here overnight. You can go and see her now. Thank you, doctor. How do you feel? Not so bad. I'm sorry, Mr. Campbell. Sorry about what? I'm not good for anything. That's not true. It is. What have I ever done? Remember when I first opened the reading room and Omar and those guys came by? You were the only one who showed any concern for me. What do you mean? Because I told you not to mess with them? Not just that. You were on my side. I felt like you were the only person. And whenever I see you, that's what I remember. 
I only wanted the magazines. <laughs> I don't believe that for a second. Look, I'm gonna pay you back for these medical bills. You don't have to pay me back. You just rest now. Leave me alone. What happened? Leave me alone. I need an explanation. Explanation is I'm stupid. There's got to be some mistake. There's no mistake. Go away. It's over with. I need to know how you could do so badly on the test. I read too slow. It takes me a while to sort out the words. I've been faking all the way through school. How about the practice tests? I memorized those to impress you, Jilly and everybody. On the real test when the time was up, I hadn't even made it through the second reading section. I guessed on all the others. Why didn't you tell us? We could have helped you. You see how Jillian works for the kids? I'm not a kid. I'm 17 years old. Maybe you could take it again. No, I can't. It's over. You didn't memorize the math. You got 680 in that. That's in the 90th percentile. Can you just forget it? Maybe we can let them know on the application that you have this problem. Why you care so much what happens to me? The real question is why you surprised that I cared. My wife had a theory. The more caring you bring into the world, the less room there is for hate. Is that why you came down here? To honor your wife? College and everything. College is where you belong. A 920 on your SAT doesn't get you there. It'll get you working at the tire store. He says he reads too slow. With all those practice tests, he's been memorizing them, just to impress us. Reads too slow? I mean, it takes him a while to sort it out. Well, he can take an untimed test. Lots of students do it. Dyslexics, blind, deaf, there are all sorts of exemptions. This is so rare down here. The student needs to be tested, a specific diagnosis, a counselor, needs to coordinate the entire process. We need to arrange for time, appoint a proctor for the exam. You're telling me it's just too much trouble to allow this kid to have a shot at the future. Now, what I'm saying is it's a lot more complicated than you imagine. I can handle the complications. The truth is, some students just don't test well. The truth is that the testing process is flawed. Look, Mr. Campbell, the community is very appreciative for what you've done. And show your appreciation by allowing Dale to retake his SAT. What I see here is very consistent with his record. His SAT score was, well, it's, it's just equivalent. He's always been strong in math and quite average in his verbal subjects. That's because he can't read. That's a bit of an exaggeration. I don't see any drop off here from. No, forget his... the file. I know this kid. He's smart. He belongs at a university. All he needs is for you to help him take an untimed SAT. Man, these kids have to fight with everybody. 
He'll need to be tested. Get a legitimate diagnosis. I'll take care of that. Will you help with the rest? As you suspected, Daryl has a reading variance, a decoding problem that impairs his processing speed. I have no problem recommending that he take an untimed SAT. You can see that Daryl is extremely bright in almost all areas. The areas where his scores fall off. So you think I could go to college? Given the testing I've done, I not only think you can go to college, I think you can get an academic scholarship. What kind of SAT score would you need for a scholarship? Something over 1,400. This test will be untimed. We will have breaks at 90 minute intervals. You may begin the test now. Send me the policy and uh, I'll take a look at it. I got a guy that says he can save us 600 on insurance. Bill? I also ordered those books you wanted. Bill? Mr. Daryl James Barber? Everybody. Let's form a circle. Come on, hurry up. Hi. Hello. All right, class. This is the reading room. Now, if there's ever a book that you can't find in the school library, you can just come here. Now, I have a surprise for you. Take a seat. Anywhere you can find. Believe in yourself. Set your standards high, you deserve the best. Try for what you want and never settle for less. Believe in yourself no matter what you choose. Keep a winning attitude and you can never lose. Think about your destination, but do not worry if you stray because the most important thing is what you have learned along the way. Take all that you've become to be all you can be. Soar above the clouds and let your dreams set you free.
some soda with you. Thank you. I'm going to the museum. We have a new video game about a detective. We have to look up information to solve the crime. Now see here. Mr. Campbell, I've got some good news and some bad news. Uh-oh. The bad news is I'm giving you my notice. I'm gonna go next door and work at Martha's. She gave me a job doing color and stuff. But don't worry, because David's gonna take over for me. Oh, well, that's good news all around. You'll be right next door. Congratulations. Mr. Campbell. I hate to disturb your party, but I just wanted to tell you that uh, we arrested Omar for setting the fire. What evidence? Well, we have a witness. Who? That man. He brought him in. What's his name? Victor Hernandez. Excuse me. Sure. You're Edgar's father, aren't you? He doesn't know me. I was in prison when Edgar was born. Well, why don't you come on over and introduce yourself to Edgar? No, I will when the time is right. Thank you for teaching him to read. Thank you for what you did. That was my pleasure. What do you think? Thank you. We have something for you. Just for you, William. It's from all of us whose lives you've touched. Marjorie's handprint and, and Edgar's. <laughs> oh, my wife would have loved this. Helen Campbell. I wish you could have known her. It was her last wish that I come down here and open this reading room, and now I'm beginning to understand why. She understood what I would need after she's gone. A family. <laughs> <laughs>
Reverend. Brother Campbell. Nice day, isn't it? Your trees seem to be doing well. They look as if they might survive. What do you think? I believe you're right. Have a nice afternoon. Hey, boss. Were you taking the day off? I'm taking the week off. And I'm supposed to watch this place alone? Hire somebody. We can use the help. Somebody can use the summer job. Boss. You want me to get you a new one? Yeah, one for the whole year. Give yourself a raise. <laughs>